With the recent boom in the amount of new 3D printers being released, spurred on by the popularization of clipper-based machines such as the Bamboo Lab X1, Elegoo Neptune Pro, and NDV3 SE, you might look at your old Creality CR10 or ND3 and feel like it's not really adequate anymore and be tempted into buying the latest and greatest. First off, not only is that incredibly wasteful, I'm here to tell you that it might just be completely unnecessary. Now, I'm not going to deny that having a new printer will save you time from the faster print speeds and some of the automated features, however for those of us with a little bit of tinkering spirit and only just a couple of things to print a month, there's really no reason to upgrade and sometimes just a bit of maintenance is all you're going to need to keep on chugging. To prove this, today I'll be taking a look at what the original notorious a 8 is still capable of with just a little bit of love and care. I got this printer kit back in around 2017, right at the peak of its popularity, and even back then it was not considered as anything special of a printer, other than its low low price of $180. Now, almost 7 years on, it's still almost completely stock and running on the original firmware. There's been a boatload of popular community modifications available for the A8 such as flashing Marlin, uh, swapping to an E3D hot end, or even just rebuilding the whole thing into an AMN using aluminium extrusions, though honestly I've never felt compelled to add any of them. Throughout this time, the printer has been extremely reliable with minimum maintenance uh, only with the occasional tightening of all the connector and frame screws. It's got me through countless university and personal projects with no issues at all. Recently however, I started to realize that the print quality has been suffering and after more than 600 hours of printing going through about 5000 meters of filament, yet never once really performing proper maintenance, it does make sense that this would be the case. At first, I thought it was finally time for me to retire the printer and purchase one of the newer flashy models. However, giving it some thought, I realized that there's really nothing the new ones can do that the ANIT A8 can't do, you know, at least for my use cases. So. Let's perform some maintenance on this ancient artifact to see if we can improve anything. First and most important is to swap out all the linear bearings on the printer. Again, even when the printer was new, these bearings weren't exactly considered great and after 7 years they've all but given out. You can hear the obvious creaking and squeaking from almost every axis and the movement is not smooth when moving the print carriage and bread. This is definitely causing a lot of artifacting in the walls and details of the print. The belts have already been recently replaced but that was because the original one straight up disintegrated about a year ago. Next is to replace the stock 0.4mm nozzle. The bowl has probably been destroyed by the whole roll of carbon fiber PLA that I used to print parts for my drone and is likely causing some of the over extrusion problems I've been facing. Since I already have to buy a new nozzle, I decided to get a new hot end block as well since they cost almost nothing as a pair. The last thing on the list is a new magnetic PEI print bed to replace the aging one that's been giving me really really ugly first layers due to all the scratches I've put into it over the years. Although it did hold on to everything extremely well. With this PEI sheet, I've never once had a print come off or lift up from the bed and if it wasn't for the first layer quality, I would still be using it. I start by disassembling the hot end carriage to remove the original hot end throat which I will need to use with the new block and nozzle. When assembling the new hot end, it is impossible to screw in the throat first before tightening the nozzle all the way to prevent any potential gaps that can cause filament leaks. I then had to cut out some caftan tape that was holding the old heat block and thermistor together to get it to fit into the new heater block because the configuration was not exactly the same as the original one from the A8. With the carriage disassembled, I continued to take apart the X and Y axis to get access to the old bearings. After taking out the heated bed, I realized that half the screws holding the Y axis bearings in place were loose which could have been some of the causes of the binding along the rails. After failing to remove the C-clips with a flathead screwdriver, I made a quick trip to the local hardware store to get the proper pliers along with a can of white lithium grease. Before installing the new bearings, I made sure to thoroughly grease up the insides with the help of the linear rods. I'm not sure if this was particularly necessary or if it even would help, but I figured that it wouldn't make anything worse, so I just decided to do it. Then came what I would never have guessed to be the hardest part of this maintenance process, replacing the print surface. Whatever glue they used on the original PEI sheet must have been insane because even with alcohol, acetone and 3 hours of scrubbing, I could only manage to remove about 50% of the residue. Since it was getting late, I decided to call it good enough and just applied the new magnetic base on top. Oh, 
So, after putting everything back together, leveling the print bed and carriage, I reprinted the fan shroud to get an apples to apples comparison of the before and after print quality. Note that the print settings I used are considered fast for this kind of printer, and when printing smaller detailed models, I could set it down to 40 or 50 mm per second. It's just that for functional parts like these, I find that the finish, even at 70 to 80 mm per second, is more than good enough for me. Now, looking at the results, I was honestly shocked. I was expecting an improvement, but just not to this degree. It shows just how neglected my printer was before this without even realizing, and I'm sure it's the same for a lot of printer owners out there. Had I been ignorant, I would have just assumed that was how the printer was all along and just decided that I needed to buy a new one. Now, here's another printed model of my friend's head, this time with more detail and yet printed at the same speed, the results are still amazing. You can go ahead and take a look at a few more of the things I printed and judge the result for yourself. So I just want to end the video with a few notes. While I acknowledge that there is the market of consumers out there that do not want to tinker and just want to hit print on their phone and get a perfect result every time, I highly doubt that those who got something like an Ender 3, Creality CR10, or maybe even an Alien A8 in the first place, are those kind of people. So before you get tempted by the myriad of new marketing from these capitalistic companies, making you think that your aging printer is no longer cutting it, show it some love and care like I've shown you today, and it will still likely produce perfectly acceptable prints for years to come.